Post, Reinventing Social Justice. Don't walk in front of me. I may not follow. And don't walk behind me. I may not lead. Just walk beside me and be my friend. Albert Camus. The story that I'm going to tell you today is the story of a friendship. The friendship between my social justice self and my spiritual self. When I was 20, they used to walk side by side as friends. Then in my 30s, spiritual self lost his faith in God and social justice took the lead. And then a few years ago, social justice lost his faith in a better world. And spiritual self said, we are in deep trouble but I might know a place where I will get some help. Please, wait for me. And today, the last day, is the day of their re-encounter. Social justice self! <laughs> Spiritual juice, yes! Oh, so good to see you. Oh, it has been so long. Oh, but you look good. Yeah, you look decent too. A little belly, but uh, yeah, you know, doing nothing, waiting for you. But I've been missing you. I've been missing you too. Did you? You seem to have had great times with your philosophy and cosmology and consciousness friends, didn't you? I had some great times indeed. <laughs> but the journey was not as peaceful as I expected. I mean, the first few months were exhilarating, like Disneyland. I know, not an appropriate metaphor for the temple of anti-modern consciousness, <laughs> but that's how I felt in a Russian mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome and fasten your seatbelt and go for a ride into integral ecology and neuroscience and astrology and cosmology and death psychology <laughs> and Tai Chi. <laughs> well, that ride lasted a good six months. And then fun was over. And I became dizzy. And then truly seasick. And I realized that I've been so naive. I thought that I could come, have fun, learn a few tools, and go back to the world with the same ego, actually with a stronger than ever ego. But the PCC program doesn't give a shine to your ego. It crushes it <laughs> into small pieces. Yeah, I remember that after that John Amesi's workshop, you were not only grieving our ego, but you were so angry against humanity as a whole. Yes, I was. Because we, supposedly Homo sapiens sapiens, I mean, we don't have the minimum wisdom to take care of our own habitat. We do not deserve to live on Earth. Who are we anyway? The consciousness of the universe? Ray and swim? No. <laughs> this is so anthropocentric. This is so arrogant. Well, maybe we do not deserve to live on Earth, but here we are. And we messed up as we listened this morning. So we should be the one to clean up our mess. I mean, this is why social justice has been invented 200 years ago. First, to fight capitalist exploitation, and then racism, 
and then gender inequalities, and then climate change, in order to provide equal access to resources and opportunities for all. And we did win a few wars, didn't we? Hmm, a few battles, but no war. Okay, you're right, but that's why you went to that wonderful school in order to learn new tools and get rid of the problems, no? So, I'm excited, I'm thrilled, you are back. What are the tools that you are bringing back? Hmm, I'm bringing back uh, a new pair of lenses to look into the cosmos and into my psyche. Okay, interesting. And something else? And, uh, and a story. Uh, a story in progress. Wow! Wow! So you've been away for two years studying at CIIS and you come back with a, a new pair of lenses <laughs> and one story in progress? <laughs> Ooh, you have been working very hard! <laughs> I have and I'm on the verge of collapse. But you might be interested in that story, because actually it's a story about social justice. Your raison d'être. Well, thank you. I would have been more interesting to, to hear about your, the, the story of your enlightenment, but I'm curious, yeah, what's that new story about social justice? How does it differ from the story I just told you? Well, your story is a 200 years story. And I think that if we really want to understand social justice, a 14 billion years perspective is necessary. Oh my God. I bet that when you will be finished with that story, all those people will be cooked and CO2 or drowned in the sea. Oh, don't worry. I know your patience. So I will give you the three minute speech. I mean, in these new stories, the universe has been patiently working for billions of years to shape social justice through its cosmological powers. First through centration to create unique beings and then through allurement to attract them to each other and then through synergy to invite them to something bigger and then emergence to innovate and homeostasis to maintain accomplishment. Well, to make a long story short, hundreds of million years ago, a huge leap occurred with the appearance of maternal care. With the appearance of maternal care. Probably first with trees, but certainly through vertebrates, as fish and birds and snakes, as the, the parents, and especially the mothers, I'm sorry, especially the, the mothers, took more time attending and defending their babies rather than other individuals. And then, 200 billion years ago, Maternal care literally exploded among mammals because babies were born so vulnerable, so helpless that their mother had to be attuned to the, their smell and their sounds and their slightest movement to keep them safe, to keep them warm, to keep them fed. I mean, that was a cosmological revolution, the first time in the history of Earth that one society of being chose to radically protect their most vulnerable members. Their most vulnerable members. Wow! And that's amazing, you're right. I mean, those mothers, they were not only exceptional mothers, they were the first social justice activists. I can imagine them marching in the jungle and chanting to the cosmos, what do we want? Care 
for everyone. When do we want it? Now. Come on. That's easy. Care for everyone. Yeah? One, two, three. What do we want? Care for everyone. When do we want it? Now. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, but wait, wait, wait. The story is not finished. Mm. Because 200,000 years ago, I mean yesterday in cosmic time, Homo sapiens sapiens appear. Well, a species who mess up sometime, as we have listened to this morning, but also a species who cares. And more than that, who cares about care. And therefore, who seek to expand and deepen care through habits and customs and laws. And then, 2,500 years ago, with such figures as, as Buddha and then later Jesus and so many others, care evolves into universal compassion. Yeah. And then 200 years ago, universal compassion evolves into social justice. Yes, and your story meet my story. And let me guess what happened next. Yeah, 60, 60 years ago, Earth activists entered the scene and social justice evolved into social and environmental justice, requesting access not only to resources and, and, and opportunities, but including environmental benefits and burden. Yeah, that's a wonderful story. So this is the story of 14 billion years, story of social justice. And now we can get, go back to work. Nope, nope, because there is an epilogue. And now we are reaching the deepest root cause of our ecological, social, political, economical consciousness crisis. Because the problem with social and environmental justice is that it still puts the human at the center as the only subject managing a collection of objects. Yes, yes, but didn't the, the universe itself put us at the center? I mean, don't you trust the universe decision? Oh, this is a deep question. And I do. I do trust the universe decision. But I think that our task is to wonder why did the universe took that decision to put us at the center. And I don't think that the universe up there created us here to consume objects down there. I think that the universe evolves in us and speaks through us. And he says, you are all magnificent and important creatures. And from now on, we are going to take care of each other. This is the new role of the human. This is the new role of the human, to spread the word and to act consequently. And to act consequently. Yeah, wow. I'm sorry I'm lost. I'm lost in my story, but that's okay. But this is, this is a revolution of objects to become subjects that is reinventing social justice. This is incredible. We need a new definition. Yes. What about mutually enhancing relationship among all members of the universe? Yes, yes, I love it. 
But you know, those mutually enhancing relationships are hard to build. We need rituals like sacred moments in sacred place like fire where every creature, mosquitoes and rivers and homeless people, George, yeah, and, and whales and, and CIIS alumni and forest can come and gather and tell their story about the universe, about life, about climate change, about violence, about discrimination, about inequality. Yes, you know, someone has been talking about that sacred place. He called it the parliament of all things. I always thought that was a, a brilliant utopian idea, but I can see now that this is our destiny. So what else do we know? What, what, what else do we need? Well, we have already, we are, we are groping and, and glimpsing towards a new myth, the new story about social justice. But I think we need to review the archetype of the social justice activist. What do you mean? I mean that as long as the social justice hero consider himself as an officer fighting a war against injustice or an engineer fixing world problems or a rich person giving a hand to poor people or a good person sacrificing his life or his neighbor or even worse a smart guy who thinks he's smart with a higher level of consciousness and will teach the masses. Well, as long as we work like this, we are not going anywhere. The type of hero we need today is an humble servant who surrenders to the cosmological powers and let them do the work. Yeah, I know who you mean. That type of hero, maybe he just graduated from CIIS <laughs> and he's lazy. So he looks for free energy and he finds cosmological powers. And so he's happy because he can relax in his bovine and divine placidity. You know, I know him. He's my friend. And you know what we are going to do? We are going side by side as friend to the Nevers bar to celebrate the new story of social justice with a delicious Belgian beer. Yeah. <laughs> are there any questions for either one of the Juleses? <laughs> Okay, uh, I have a question for you. Ooh. Are you ready? Um, I, I want to know. I want the. I want to hear your reason for for why you and Joshua are not going out and making films and TV shows and and populating the internet. I, what's the reason? I mean, you. This is my first talk. <laughs> So it was a try, that was a try, that was a try. But um, I don't know, you know, I always felt I've been working for 25 years in, in a big foundation, making grants. And I always felt that my role was to be behind the scene, to be invisible, so that the NGOs and the universities and the, and the, and the real leaders can do their job and shine. So yeah, that's not my, my thing. And you know, I mean, we have been talking and I've been telling you, yeah, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a leader, a spokesperson. I mean, it's very available, but I don't think this is my, this is my vocation. I want to help channeling 
Brian Swim and Thomas Berry and, and Teilhard de Chardin and, and everyone. I want, you to cha- I want you to channel Joshua. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you two are brilliant. Mm. Awesome. Just at least think about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alice. Um, the last um, speaker, we were, I think that what it takes is courage. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was pointing with it. Sorry. <laughs> I think the issue is courage in leadership of any kind. I think that, you know, we can be fragile and vulnerable. And when we look at ourselves, okay, we are a little afraid to do anything. I've been afraid most of my life. It's been a long one, too. But I think that at a certain point, when I was talking to myself, I got courage. And that's the only reason I'm using this microphone at all. Mm. Well, thank you. (laughs) One last question before we break. Yeah. I'm still in your conversation, and I'm very appreciated for that. But I do have a question: Like, can you explain a little bit more about the hero we need today, like the servant, not like the teacher or whatever? I do want to hear more about the hero we need today. You told just now. I mean, the servant. The servant for me, I hear it. I hear it first from in in a retreat from with uh, Joanne Halifax. And um, she was talking about the the one fixing, the one helping, and then the one serving. And I felt that uh, that that really resonated to me in uh, in a spiritual um, realm. But then from Brian, I mean Brian and Thomas Berry and, and everyone, I think what you are telling is that this is not our own efforts. At the end, what we just need to do is to open ourselves to the cosmological powers. I mean, looking at, at centration and, and transmutation and synergy, etc. I mean, this is just coming. And so, I mean, channeling is a good... And, 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 and this is what I would say becoming servant, because for 25 years I've been born out doing the job. And, and, and by myself, with my, my energy, etc. And, and that is exhausting and not, e- not efficient. Um, so that's where I felt the servant is someone who received the energy from God, from the cosmos, from CIIS, from everyone here in this room. And that just flow. Thank you, Jules. Thank you.